Hey y'all, it's Johnny Mullet here with another video. Today we're going to continue on with the Schoolie Maintenance and Repair Series. And today we are going to do a complete rear brake overhaul on Thunder. Thunder has a hydraulic brake system with disc brakes in the front and rear. I am going to show you how to tear her down, get her cleaned up, get everything changed out, and uh, we'll go from there. So first off, we're going to get it jacked up, get it on stands, make sure it's safe, and I'll get right back with you. All right, time to remove the wheels. Before you take the nuts all the way off, I got to show you what you got to do first. If you notice, I didn't take the nuts all the way off because these wedges are under high stress. So if I took the nuts all the way off and then started messing with the wheel, the wedges could fly out and hurt you. So leave the nuts on, pop them off. Once all the wedges, these are the wedges, once they're all off, There's the outer wheel. There's the spacer. And here's the brake caliper. So what we want to do first is loosen this line up if you're replacing the caliper. So you're not fighting it later. And you got this wedge bolt right here. So I'm tapping this wedge out, and that holds the caliper on to the vehicle. Now that the caliper is off, we're going to remove the axle.
Sometimes they come right out, sometimes they don't. Usually an axle doesn't come out that easily. Some of them have like little wedges behind the, the washers and the nuts that make it really difficult. And usually you're swinging on it for a while. But this bus here, fairly easy. Um, inside you have an outer nut. You have a, uh, a lock and then an inner nut to remove the bearings and drop the hub. And inside, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. But there is a little lock tab right there that I got to bend out of the way. And once the tab is free, sometimes you'll find two. You can use a socket and remove the nut, or sometimes you can just drop the chisel right into the dirty oil. Outer nut, I like to keep everything in order, so I'm going to lay a rag down, and as it comes off, I lay it straight down. And this is the lock. As you see, it has a cradle for the inner nut, and these little tabs bend over to the outer nut to keep it locked. Why do you ask so many questions? And off comes the hub. Okay, right now I have the hub flipped over and draining into the bucket and there is an inner bearing still in there with a seal on the back side. So you need to pound the bearing out without damaging it. So you want to put your punch on the inner hardened part 
of the bearing. Don't hit the bearing on the cage or you'll destroy it. So, very carefully. And there she went. There's the inner bearing, and there's the seal that we need to replace. Next step, we gotta remove the rotor if you're replacing them. Save all your nuts and save all your washers and the rotor come right off. Sometimes you gotta beat it with a hammer, but she'll come right off. Next step now is all the cleanup. I want to clean this hub, make it look like new. All this old green glue from the old seal needs removed. And I also want to clean the spindle that it came off of. I'll show you how. Okay, this is your spindle. You want to clean this, you can't get it clean enough. You want to make sure there's no dirt or anything on it. And you also want to make sure the surface where the seal, this is your seal, would normally ride. On this surface right here you got to make that super clean and make sure your new seal before you pound it in make sure it fits your spindle and you got the correct one so what I like to use is after I get it pretty much cleaned off of the rag I'm not completely done cleaning yet is I use emery cloth emery cloth is really good for cleaning these up you don't want to use power tools or anything abrasive that's going to damage the spindle so I just take the emery cloth and Work my way around nice and easy. If you have any rough spots or hard spots, you can just work it a little harder and she'll come right out. As long as that's nice and smooth and clean, you can go ahead and use a parts cleaner or something to clean the entire spindle. Make sure it's super clean and we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the hub. Um, to clean this part of the hub, you can go ahead and use a, like a wire wheel or something. It won't hurt it. So I got all the old glue from the old seal out of there. I want to inspect the bearing race, make sure there's no pitting or rusting in the bearing. And I also want to inspect them bearings before I put them back in. Um, when you're looking at bearings, you want to look for rust, you want to look for pitting. 
and uh, bent cages and stuff like that. If you find that, then you need to replace the bearings. But uh, all in all, you should be good. So what I'm doing now is I'm cleaning the hub real nice. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple rags down. And we're gonna flip her towards me. And basically I'm cleaning all the dirt and grime out of the hub because inside the hub is where the bearings ride and where the oil is. You don't want dirt in there. So get it as clean as possible. Break clean does a really nice job. And I'll also go ahead and use the brake cleaner on the spindle that I just prepped. And we're going to go ahead and reassemble it. So what do you think of that? You guys ready for the reassembly? I am. Okay, I got the new rotor bolted on and everything is cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, this is the inner bearing all cleaned up. I like to take a little... Uh, this vehicle takes just regular gear oil, 80W90. So I am going to pre-lube the bearing. So it's not dry. Put a little pre-lube on her. And we're going to drop her down in there, make sure it fits. This is the new seal. Um, some people put silicone around them, but this one here, you no need with this rubber type seal. It's a really good, good seal. Um, you're going to need a seal installer tool. You don't want to just try to beat it in. And if you listen to the sound, it should change when it's fully seated. Right there did you hear that so it is completely seated I want to take a little oil on my finger and rub it on the inside of that seal where it's going to go on to that spindle and one of the most important things that people forget and this is what will destroy a bearing is this is the most important thing is before you put your uh, spindle on before you put this hub on the spindle, you have to pre-fill the hub because it's going to take forever for the oil to come from the differential into here. And by the time it does, it's too late and you done burned everything up. So you want to put oil in this hub until it comes all the way up to where it's ready to spill out on you. So that's where you want your oil level before installing the hub. All right, we're getting ready to install the hub onto the spindle. It's very heavy. If you don't have help and you can't do it yourself, wait till you get help. Because you've got to do this carefully and you don't want to destroy the seal or the seal surface. So you want to have your outer bearing and all your nuts ready to go. Let's get this thing on here. Very heavy. Okay, little pre-lube outer bearing. We'll get the inner nut. You don't want to use the hammer and chisel method putting it together. You want to use the actual socket. Let me show you how to pre-load the bearing. I like to go ahead and run her in. When I start feeling a little resistance, I like to spin it. Go some more. Spin it. Give it a good snugging. Spin it. And then I like to back it off about a quarter turn. That is your preload right about there. In order to match your lock, you can go backwards or forward just a little bit, as long as you don't have end play on the wheel. And I showed you this uh, inner nut, or spacer here, lock. It has to cradle, literally cradle the inner nut. Once you've got that cradled, 
You go ahead and you put your outer nut on. The outer nut, go ahead and get it as tight as possible. Give it a spin. Make sure there's no end play. And then I gotta take those little metal tabs that I talked about earlier, and I wanna bend one of them over to lock the outer nut from coming loose. So there you go, that's how you preload your bearings. Um, the next few steps is basically, I wanna clean this up a little bit here. I wanna put a little silicone on the axle Put the axle in, tighten it up, put the new caliper on, put the brakes on, and bleed the system out. And that's pretty much it. So this is just one side. I've still got the other side to go. So I'm running out of room on my phone for the video, so I'd like to show you more, but you guys get the gist of it. So be careful out there. Thanks for watching.